Hi everybody, this is Spartan Ireland and uh, we got Tahoe coming up uh, this, this weekend. So I just want to share a few things, things that I have um, planned on in terms of uh, gear options. Um, I have some experience in Tahoe. I've been there the last four years in a row. Did four ultras, two world championship beasts. So I've had 10 laps around Tahoe. Had a variety of weather um, there in the different years. Um, not only that, but you can find that Tahoe is a place that even with the good weather, you can go from getting your sunburn to getting hypothermic on the same day in the same race. Um, so things can change a lot up there when you get up higher elevation. Um, you can go from having no winds to getting blasted by 40 mile an hour winds. Um, the forecast saying a high of 37 for Squaw Valley right now. Um, that's just warm enough to be getting rain instead of snow. Um, but again, that's the high of the day, which some of us may not even see during our race time. And also that's the high of the day at the Squaw Valley at Festival Elevation. If you look at uh, nationalweather.gov, um, look at like some of those areas kind of up by the swim, 8,400 feet of elevation. And what I'm seeing is a high of 29 degrees. So that means never as warm as freezing, um, which means we could go up there and be in snow and then we could come down and get ourselves into some rain, possibly. Um, right now they haven't announced they're pulling the water features. I think we're the Spartan race is waiting to see if the forecast stays true, if the weatherman got it right. If he did, if the high up there where we're swimming is less than freezing, it's really not likely that they're going to want to manage all the issues that are going to come up um, with having you know hundreds or thousands of uh, racers go through the water um, to come out to 25 degree air. Um, but we will see. And so Spartan Race is doing the right thing, telling you be prepared. They haven't pulled the swim yet, so expect that you're going to have the water feature obstacles and have some options to deal with that. So uh, let's uh, talk about gear. Um, Starting with the upper, no, we'll start with lower body and um, things that I think about gear is generally you want to get the benefits and that you need um, and with the lightest weight gear possible that you're not hindering your race performance um, by the weight that you're carrying while at the same time not hindering it by um, being ill prepared for the elements. So just lightweight form fitting, uh, moisture wicking, uh, lightweight undies. Um, going on from there, the next thing I'm most likely going to go with, especially if I know we've pulled all the water features, is a racing tight. Um, again, lightweight, moisture wicking, but it'll keep a little more body heat um, for my legs and keep my muscles warmed up. Um, if they... If we have all the water features, um, unless you have something like I've got here, the hard shell pants to put on over and after um, after the swim to really protect yourself from the wind, um, I would say that racing shorts, if you're going to get wet and be cold, uh, my experience is they worked a lot better because they're not keeping all the cold water on your legs. Your skin is going to air dry um, much faster than this is going to air dry, even though this does dry out pretty quick. Um, although it doesn't necessarily dry out quickly in you know 30 degree weather um, with a swim in 42 degree water um, but like I said I'm I'm prepared for some different options I'm expecting if it stays the same on the weather report they're likely going to have to pull the swim because it's be too much of a logistics problem um, so if that's the case, I'll have the racing tights on first. I'll have the shorts on um, over the top. That's a lightweight compression short. It weighs basically nothing. And I got these handy little pockets, no zippers, nothing to fuss with. I'll have um, racing gel packets in there. Um, even if I go with a hard shell pant over the top to protect myself from snow and rain, um, and also trapping more body heat on the inside. Um, I can slide my arm in between and get a get a gel packet with um, with no time wasted, no zippers, no fuss. Um, another option, and I recommend folks bring options. And then you are going to have to make some sort of a decision on race day, make a judgment call. But this is an Under Armour cold weather. Um, uh, base layer. So when I get moving, especially going up hills, that's going to trap a, a lot more heat. That's really going to heat me up and it's probably too much. Um, I guess it just depends on, I mean, if we're racing and it's in the teens, maybe I want that much heat. Uh, so that's an option that I have. Um, 
but likely this and maybe the hard shell pant over the top. I'm going to have enough body heat retention and protection from the rain and wind at the same time. Moving on to upper body, um, again, my guess now is that what I'll likely go with lightweight, uh, moisture wicking, long sleeve. Um, it's made by Spartan Racewell. You know, they're always changing the lineup. It actually has like a little bit of extra ventilation in your back to let more, uh, more of your perspiration and body heat, um, out that you just, uh, you know, aren't getting damp, um, and so I'll probably go with that. Another option that I have, and it's uh, highly likely I could just take both, is just this really lightweight, um, you know, polyester shirt, uh, short sleeve, and so I'll, I'll keep a little more body heat for my core, um, and again, it weighs practically nothing, so I'm not going to feel that affecting my tempo on the run. Um, like I said, if we if we think we're racing in the teens, if I really think I need just um, a lot more warmth, um, then I've got this Under Armour cold gear, um, and so and I've been out there moving in this. I've been out there, you know, hiking in the woods, hunting things like that. And um, you know, when you're moving, this thing uh, this thing will heat you up fast, and we will we will definitely be moving in Tahoe. So if I really think I need to fight, you know, just really frigid air. I've got a an option that's a lot warmer. However, aside from that, I think the most important upper body thing everybody should be thinking about is how are you going to protect yourself from the wind, the snow, and the rain? So I've got this nice lightweight waterproof, not water resistant, water resistant. You're in uh, wet elements long enough, rain pounded on you, and it's going to start absorbing that into the material, and then it's not going to do you any good for keeping you warm. So I would say waterproof. Um, it's got a hood. The hood I can tuck away or I can pop it out. It's got these little doodads to um, cinch up the hood if I need it, like if it's windy, but I really want that hood on me so I'm not losing all my heat out the top of my bald head. And I would highly recommend when you have layers like this zippers uh, that's a big deal because you want to be able to change you know in a moment on the run um, how much heat you're retaining if you're too hot for the kind of work that you're doing um, zipper and boom you're letting some of that that air out so you can regulate yourself um, much better uh, the other things that i have um, this is made by yeti um, this is got the the velcro but then here at the top on the inside it's uh two rows of magnets so um it's uh highly rated highly reviewed for doing a great job of being perfectly waterproof um, and really keeping things dry even if you do submersion like doing a dunk wall and you can see it's got some room it's actually like a four liter capacity so inside it i don't even know if i'll have both of these in there or if i'll be wearing them or not taking them at all but you can see it's it's got some capacity to hold some things. So inside this pouch, I have a down jacket. Let me set the phone down. Hang on. I'm coming right back, I swear. All right, so here we go. Down jacket. Again, if I need this much... Um, this much heat retention, I've got the option. Um, like I said, because it can just fit around my waist, it's not going to weigh much. I'm not going to feel that um, when I'm in, at a run pace. Um, but if I wanted, I could pull that out. If I if I went out on course thinking I was good with my windbreaker and you know my my lightweight uh, lightweight layer, and I'm just freaking freezing out there, and you know, and it's a you know a health risk or going to ruin my race performance. I could have this stuffed away in here. It's been dry the whole time. Pull it out again. The top layer with a zipper, so I can regulate body heat. Um, additionally, I actually have it's the same thing, but it's a vest. Um, so I got another option for keeping more heat, but less than the long sleeve version. Um, moving on from there, I've got. Um, Shoe options. I love these Speed Goat Evos. Um, they fit perfect. Um, I mean, they they the upper just uh, locks down on the foot. Great drains water. Great. Uh, it's a great racing shoe with good traction. Um, more than adequate traction for what we're going to see in Tahoe. Like I said, I've been there and done that. It's not as steep as Big Bear, um, though. We are going to get quite a bit of elevation gain. Um, 
but um, those those are a great option, and I think they're just a nine ounce shoe. This is heavier. Um, but I raced this in Whistler um, on a course where we wouldn't get water features till the end. So no submersion till just at the finish line. But raining the entire time, wet grass, wet vegetation. Um, these kept my feet dry the whole time. I was able to have um, just a really uh, fun and epic head-to-head -head battle with Matt the Bear Novakovic. And as we were flying down the trail... Um, and he even told me later that his heart rate got up to 180, so we were really moving. Um, I did not feel the weight of these shoes at all, even though they are a 12-ounce shoe. Um, but like I said, they're waterproof. My feet were dry there in, in a rainy Whistler course all the way to the end until I actually did dunk wall. My feet were dry and comfy the entire time. And um, this uh, speed it's the Speedgoat Mid Waterproof. And the shock absorption is just unreal. So um, it'll be nice to be able to, you know, move fast on the descents and be protecting myself, um, protecting my feet at the same time that I'm doing it. Other than that, for um, the head, I have a different face mask, which I like more, can't find it, but I do have this option, so I'll bring it. I may not even use it, but with a face mask, um, it can go all the way over the top of the head. I can pull this up over, you know, my mouth and nose. Um, if I wanted to wear this during the event, um, I can slide it off the top of my head. And just It can just be sitting around my neck there and readily available to pull it back up and over if I need to start saving more body heat. Another option I have is just this buff that I got with um, a Biggest Team win, and it's really lightweight. I mean, again, it's something that weighs nothing, um, but um, and I may not use it, but it's an option to pack with me because with this you can have it, you know, wear it over the top of your, you know, over your head um, to retain some more body heat. You could pull it down around your neck. You could have it. It could be around your neck, and then you pull it up just enough to be over your nose, and mouth, shield your face, you know, halfway. So another option. The beanie is not a racing gear item, but more of. Uh, Maybe just not getting cold at festival while we're all hanging out and enjoying each other's company after the event. Um, other than that, another thing that I'll take, um, hydration pack. I normally um, do my races. Uh, I have found that I can depend on and trust Replace SR. It's an extended release um, electrolyte tab. Um, it lasts four to six hours. So I'm going to have those in me before I even start the race. I don't need anything more than water in terms of the electrolytes topic. Um, and for um, a lot of my calories, I'll just be taking the gels along with me. Um, but this is the world championship, and I don't want to burn five seconds stopping at a water station. And Tahoe is a lot of work, a lot of elevation gain. It doesn't matter that it's cold. That's not going to change the fact that you're um, you know, expending a lot of energy, a lot of body heat, and sweating, and um, in you know, going to need to be hydrated. So I'm taking a hydration pack. It's got a hundred lit, um, not a hundred liter. That's re retarded. A uh, hundred ounce, um, capacity. I don't want to carry that much weight, but something like 32 ounces body armor. I've got extra calories with me. I've got fluid. Um, it's not going to weigh me down. And then I've just got that there with me that, um, I can get some hydration, like I said, without stopping. Um, other than that, uh, final recommendations for me personally, um, I would say um, take your options, take what you need, but pack efficiently. I've got the carry-on in the backpack. I don't want to trust the um, I don't want to trust the airline um, to get my bag there, and you know I don't want to get down to bag check and wonder if uh, somebody read a tag wrong or something. So I like to have all my stuff with me in the plane because um, this gear, I mean, this stuff can be lifesaver or at least race saver it can make or break whether or not you can finish in the elements that we're going to be facing in tahoe so um don't let somebody lose track of your gear um other than that man um this is going to be epic we're going to have some some harsh elements to deal with for sure um but this is going to be one to remember um and you can do it you can get to that finish line so um come prepared have some options um and you know enjoy it this is a great sport spartan racing community man i, I love it um i love being out there with all you guys and i can't wait to see you and i'll see you at a finish line soon thanks for watching